All right, we're at C2E2, and we're talking to Simon R. Green, author of the Nightside series, the Drew Family Chronicles, and the Ghost Hunters series. Um, how do you keep track of all the different series you're working on? I plot extensively before I start writing. So whatever I'm working on, I start with the basic plot, break it down into chapters, break it down into scenes, and then I start writing. That way, I only have to concentrate on the actual words, the heavy lifting, the decision making, to be done in advance, so that I always know exactly where I am and where I'm going. I do two series a year. Uh, at the moment, I'm doing one series of series and one ghost writers, and various shorts and so on. But whatever I'm working on, I'm usually working on something else as well. So whenever I'm working on something that starts to feel a bit tired or I'm feeling a bit too easy with it, move away, look at something else, get the freshness back, come back and get it hard again. That's probably the advantage to having a couple of different things going at one time. Stall a little bit on one, move over to the other. That's it. One, often one thing will make you see another thing with a, a fresh eyesight. Right. Right. Now, some of the some crazy fun stuff in Nightside, uh, the album store where you can buy albums that were never recorded, the restaurant with meat that from extinct and non-existent animals. Is there anything too crazy for the books? Not so far. Um, it's always a case of you start off with one idea which suggests another which suggests another. Sometimes an idea will just take over. I was doing the, the Death Stalker books and in the third of the series I suddenly stopped in the middle of the plot and did a 200 page chapter which was a retelling of Apocalypse Now featuring the Muppets. I'm not even a little bit kidding, that's exactly what it was. It had nothing to do with the rest of the series, I just was insane to do that story. So I stopped, did that and then went back again. On the night side, I will often sit down and say, right, we're in uh, Strange Fellows, the oldest bar in the world, who's going to be there? And I started thinking, what would be fun? We could have this, we could have that, we could have Dracula complaining about his ex wives They're sucking me dry! And we got Zilla in the corner and the thing that walks like an it. And just one thing suggests another, and so on and so on. I have to say, the book where we finally got to meet Merlin, after all the lead-up that he was there, was it was the anticipation after all those books. It's so fun. Yeah, a lot of what I'm doing, I'll start off in one book, and I'll just... Put in a seed. Here's an idea, we'll see where it goes. Unless you go through the book, characters will come in and take over, characters will disappear, themes develop, and you'll find you've got all this wealth of material to work with. When you look back, you see a straight line. But it didn't happen that way, it's one right. thing leads to another. So when you look back, oh, I knew what I was doing all along after all. Right. And often it comes as a surprise to me. Now, with the Druid books, yeah. immediately I love the the spoof on the Bond titles? Yeah, I mean, I am a huge Ian Fleming fan. I was reading the James Bond books before I was old enough to get into the cinema to see the films. So for me, I always enjoy the films by how close they are to the original books. People put down Ian Fleming as a writer. No, he was working within the genre. He was a damn good writer in his own right. If you look at the very first book, Casino Royale, the opening page is just a book of description about what it's like to be in a casino at four in the morning when the luck's gone bad and you can smell the scent of desperation. Right. Just that opening page is a stopper. I started reading when I was about ten. Yeah, I mean, I used to get sent to the principal's office. They'd call my parents and I'm like, yeah, we gave him the book. But I always wanted to do something with the James Bond kind of thing. Having done The Night Side, which is one of the great quintessential characters of modern fiction, which is The Private Eye, and this is what a new series, I thought, well, what's the other great quintessential character? It's The Secret Agent. And I started with that. I want to do a Secret Agent, I want to do a James Bond feel, and one thing again suggested another, suggested another, and it pretty much wrote itself as I was going. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, you pretty much have nailed the quintessential hard boiled PI. Now you've got the quintessential spy. Yeah, is there anything else you're kind of thinking about dabbling with? Yeah. Um, I said, I've been doing the Ghost Finders series. That's, I'm a huge fan of M.R. James, more traditional ghost stories. But today, the ghost story tends very much to be a period piece. Right. And I said, let's do traditional ghost stories in a modern setting. So the first, the first Ghost Finders book, Ghost of a Chance, was about a haunting in Tottenham Court Road Tube Station. It's close to the modern days you can get. I've been doing that. Um, I'm going to be doing three more 
Secret Histories, that'll be 10, 11, 12, and that'll be the end of that series. I'm putting together a new series, which is, um, it's going to be a sort of steampunk version of Les Miserables. <laughs> because I'm a huge fan of Les Miserables, the musical. And it struck me, one of the main tropes in fantasy fiction is about restoring the, uh, the lost prince to his rightful throne. I thought, no, historically, kings are bastards. Kings are the bad guys. Right. Thank you. Let's do the Les Miserables, the barricades, only this time they win. <laughs> this time they kick the throne, kick off the throne, and we put something better in its place. So I came up with the idea of a character who basically was a part of this other world, was exiled and had all his memories taken away. And then they take him back because he's desperately needed. And he starts off fighting with the king, sees what a mess it is, changes sides, especially the second half of the book, undoing everything in the first book. His first book is called Cast Along Shadow, and I should be putting out the first book hopefully somewhere next year. Outstanding. So that's what we'll see where that goes. After that, I've got a whole bunch of ideas I'm ready and willing to get stuck into. We'll see where it goes. And we got a while to go with Nightside yet? Well, I've got a collection of the Nightside short stories coming out in August, I think. For okay. And it's all the Nightside shorts I did for magazines and anthologies over the last few years. But it also includes a new short novel. Oh, excellent. Because I said, you know, if you're going to do a short story collection, I'll do a new short story just to add and the damn thing glued to 120 pages. It's called The Big Game. Now you might remember in the Nightside books I introduced uh, the Adventurers Club. Right. And I suddenly thought, what are all these heroes and good guys doing in a morally dubious place like the Nightside? I thought, it's obvious. They're on safari. <laughs> They're hunting the big game. <laughs> but of course, in the night side, the big game turns around and, and hunts you. <laughs> so this is what happens when the, the, the Adventures Club has to call in John Taylor to help. And like I said, it just grew into this wonderful short novel. So that so the entirely new piece will be in the collection. And I just, I'd forgotten how much fun it was running the night side. I, mean, I stopped doing it after 12 books because I, I have this theory that you shouldn't let a series go on too long. Right. We've all seen series that go on too long, the author's getting tired, the audience gets tired, and it's boring. So I said, no, I've done 12, we've done the big arc. John Taylor started out, he's pulled back from London proper, and gradually he goes through the arc, finding out who he is, who his family is, and he ends up as the new author. Right. Which I knew from the beginning, I didn't know how I was going to get there, but I knew that was what the arc was going to be. So I thought, I've done the 12 books, we've done the arc, time to stop. But I had so much fun doing the big game. I think I'm going to have to come back at some point. As a fan, I have to say, whenever the urge strikes, I'm happy when you scratch. Uh, can you say that loud? I've got a new editor who's just joined, so I'll take all the help I can get. But at some point, I will be going back to the night side. Excellent. I've got an idea. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Cool. Now, is this your first comic convention? This is my first big American comics convention. I'm very pleased to be here. Um, I haven't been to America in two or three years. I've been ill on and off for ages. And I couldn't figure out what it was. I was ill and getting better. So I thought, like, it can't be anything serious. And I keep getting better. But it was going on for so long, I thought, this is ridiculous. I went to the doctor. And they did the blood test. And the first thing they noticed was my blood sugar was through the roof. Diabetes too. And of course, I was ill and getting better. That's my blood sugar going up and down. Right. So I changed my diet completely. I crashed my blood sugar back to normal and I've kept it there ever since. I don't believe in insulin. But no, I've lost three stone uh, just by changing my diet. And feeling a lot better. So I said, I looked around and said, I need a, uh, a convention just to start off again. And they said, There's one in Chicago. It's a comic convention. Would you like to? I said, Yeah, I'd love to. I've never great done food, it. Great food, great people. It is. It's been a great thing. I love the dealership. The size of it is yeah. fantastic. Now, is there anything here that you've wanted to see or people you want to meet as a fan? Yeah, I mean, there's a whole bunch of people. I started out reading Marvel comics in the 60s. I grew up with Marvel, and it was DC and so on. I am, I still get previews every month. Yeah. This big phone book. Oh, yeah. I, so I just go through saying, yeah, one of these, one of those, one of these, one of those. It's like the toy catalog. It's wonderful. I love it. So I still look for the good stuff. I love coming around here, you know, seeing what's new, what's coming out. And you know, to come and see, look, Neil Adams has got a thing here. Yeah. A huge hero of mine when I was a kid. He's the reason I started reading Batman. 
Yeah, for me, I'd look at them on Marvel, the Avengers, the X-Men. Yep. The best, oh, fantastic. It was a run uh, Jim Starango did too. X-Men, Barry Smith did an X-Men. Yep. And, wow, what a book. I loved it. So again, I mean, Stan Lee's here. The matter is nice. One of our guys spent five lines, hours in line this morning to meet him. It's, you do, I, I would just love to meet him and say, you know, you're one of the reasons I became a writer. Right. Simple as that. I love this stuff. I did hear tell Steve Ditko may be coming to London to do a convention. That would be outstanding. I will be there to, I mean, he'll probably just lecture me for hours about Anne Brown, you know. Yeah. Just to meet the guy would be amazing. So, yeah. It, I just love walking around, seeing the, the various things on offer, seeing the people. I just done a, a, a panel, and people came up to me. We just came here because you were going to be here. Oh, that's wonderful. That's yeah. lovely. That's excellent. Well, I, hopefully, uh, if you have a good enough time, you'll come back at some point. I would love to. Thanks. Good to see you. Excellent.